وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين we're going to be talking today about keeping ties with the relatives that don't keep ties with you and how to manage difficult relatives and problems that happen among relatives. Abi Huraira narrated radiyallahu an anna rajulan qal ya rasulallah inna li qaraba asiluhum wa yaqta'unani wa ahsinu ilayhim wa yusi'una ilayh وَأَحْلُمُ عَنْهُمْ وَيَجْهَلُونَ عَلَيْهِ A man came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, I have relatives. I keep ties with them, but they cut off from me. And I'm good to them, but they're bad to me. And I am forgiving towards them. Al-hilm is to not to get angry with them and not to say things of, say foolish words or, or not to you know, to overlook and to let things go. And they treat me with great ignorance. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, لَإِن كُنْتَ كَمَا قُلْتَ فَكَأَنَّمَا تُصِفُّهُمْ الْمَلَلِ وَلَا يَزَالُ مَعَكْ مِنَ اللَّهِ ظَهِيرٌ عَلَيْهِمْ مَا دُمْتَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if it is as you say, then it is as though you are feeding them with hot ashes and you will continue to have a help from Allah against them as long as you remain like that. SubhanAllah, this is how we as Muslims are commanded to be, to keep the ties with the ones and the relatives, even if they don't keep those with us. We're good to them and they're bad to us. We're kind to them and they're unkind. We're gentle and they're harsh. We keep ties and they cut off. We are required to remain in that state. And as long as you remain in that state, you'll be in that situation, you'll have a help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A help from Allah even against them. And a help from Allah azza wa jalla. And you'll be, you'll be the one with the upper hand against them as long as you keep on responding to them in that way. And the Prophet says him described it as like feeding them al-malal. Any ramad al har, it's like you're putting hot ramad, hot ashes into their mouth. And some of the scholars they said it means that they will, uh, they will, you know, they'll it will hurt them that you're being so kind and so good to them, even though they're being bad to you. It's like they're the ones who are getting the negativity from it. Uh, However, the stronger opinion here is that this refers to al ithm, the sin that those people are getting. They're gonna get sin because they are being bad to you and you're being good to them. They're you treating them well and overlooking and pardoning them and they're treating you with ignorance and roughness. So they are getting the sin for it. They are getting the sin for it. And you are getting a help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet even went to the extent where he showed us that keeping ties with relatives that cut off from you, this is what is considered keeping ties. And Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhuma narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلُ بِالْمُكَافِئِ وَلَكِنَّ الْوَاصِلْ أَلَّذِي إِذَا قُطِعَتْ رَحِمُهُ وَصَلَهَا Or, إِذَا قَطَعَتْ رَحِمُهُ وَصَلَهَا Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhuma narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, it's not the one who keeps family ties, the one who does so reciprocally. In other words, one, they keep ties with him, so he keeps ties with them. But the one who keeps family ties is the one that when his family cut off from him, he keeps ties with them. SubhanAllah. This is suitable to use as a qa'ida kulliya a complete general principle in dealing with relatives, family members, uh, 
with even with people in society, with your friends, with your co-workers, with your neighbors, with anyone that has a right over you. And that's why Wallah is, is beautiful to bring it in this uh, last lesson that we're going to be doing on this segment and the last lesson to, to finish the course, inshallah ta'ala, that it is a qa'ida, you can take it and you can have it as a principle to guide you in your dealings with other people. لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلُ بِالْمُكَافِئِ that the one who really keeps ties with people isn't the one who does so when it's reciprocal. The one that if they give, he gives. If they're kind, he's kind. If they thank, he gives. If they don't thank him, he doesn't give. That's not really what Islam tells you to do. And if you do that with people, and that's your methodology with people, you won't be successful in your dealings with people. You won't be able to keep good relations with people. And you won't be able to interact with people. You'll feel hurt by them many, many times. You'll feel hurt by them and you'll find that you have bad relationships with many people because your concept is if they give me, I'll give them. If they thank me, I'll help them. And that is not what Islam came with. There's none of this issue of one for one. And that's why we find in the Quran, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا We only feed you for the sake of Allah. We don't want any reward or any thanks from you. If you live your life expecting and waiting for people to reciprocate, waiting for people to thank you, waiting for people to give you, waiting for people to be kind to you because you are kind to them, then Wallah, take it as a near guarantee that you're going to be disappointed. And you're going to find that your relationships with people generally are poor. And you're also going to find yourself uh, down and depressed about people and your relationships with people. The simple answer is forget about all the people and what they do for you. What you do you do it for Allah Azza wa Jal. Do it for Allah and don't wait for people to thank you. I can remember examples, many examples where I, I remembered this ayah came to my mind. We don't want any reward or any thanks from you. Many times in my life where I can remember this ayah and it came into my mind. SubhanAllah, you did something. And perhaps a person, it's not that they didn't thank you. Perhaps they would insult you. SubhanAllah, perhaps they would backbite you. You went out of your way to help a person. And then the person, the jaza, the, the reward they gave you is they backbited you and slandered you to everybody. After you went out of your way to help them. And you get worked up by it and you start to say, Oh, this person, you know, how could they do this after everything I've done for them? Stop. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. I don't want any jaza from you. If Alma shit, do whatever you want. I want my jaza from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't want your shukr. I don't want you to say thank you. I don't mind if you're grateful or you're not grateful. Of course, if you do something good for someone and they're grateful, Alhamdulillah, you feel good about it. Alhamdulillah. But that's not the purpose. The purpose is what is with Allah. So leave waiting for people to be good to you. Oh, my relatives are so difficult because they're not good to me. Doesn't matter if they're good to you or not. Give your concern to what is with Allah. Don't give your concern to what is with people. If you always wait for this mukafa, this one-for-one -one exchange, reciprocal kindness, then you're going to wait a very long time with the majority of Bani Adam. There are some people who are people of Ihsan and people who are people of akhlaq with good manners and good etiquettes. All of those people will not let you down ta'ala. But most of the people, you will find that you are good and they are bad. You are kind and they are rude. You are soft and gentle and they are harsh. You do ihsan and they do isa'a to you. You do good to them and they do bad to you. That's what you're going to find from most human beings. Most people are going to be like that. 
So never ever wait and remember this qa'ida, this principle. Take it as a principle that you can live your life by. لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلُ بِالْمُكَافِئِ Everything with regard to your uh, relationship with your spouse, with regard to your children, your parents, your relatives, your colleagues, your co-workers, your neighbors, لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلُ بِالْمُكَافِئِ Don't expect this everything you do will be reciprocated, that they will do the same back to you, they will give the same kindness to you. And there is an ayah, or a series of ayat, three ayat in Surah Fussilat, which give an amazing methodology for dealing with a relative or a family member who you're finding trouble with them and difficulty with them. Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيْئَةُ إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٌ وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ The good deed and the bad deed are not equal. Respond in a way that is better. When you do so, the one that there is enmity between you and them will become like your closest friend. If you want to turn the one who is negative, positive, and you want to repair bridges that have been burnt down, and you want to keep ties with your relatives even when they break ties with you, always respond in the way that is better. And that's why you can take that uh, principle and relate it to the statement of the Prophet and also to the hadith that we heard before that that I'm good to them and they're bad to me I keep ties with them, they cut off from me I speak to them uh, kindly with words of forgive forgiveness and patience and forbearance and they behave ignorantly towards me be the one with the moral high ground. Be the one who responds in the best possible way. Someone treats you badly, treat them well. Someone backbites you, speak good about them. Someone says evil about you, say good about them. Someone treats you badly, treat them well. Someone causes difficulty for you, try to make things easy for them. Respond in the way that is better. فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةً The one that there is some enmity between you and them كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ Become like your closest friend, like your best ally. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا But the people who get this, you won't be, not everybody is able to do this. Not everybody. In fact, the ayah indicates that a minority of people are able to do this. Not everyone has the tawfiq from Allah to apply ahsan, respond in the way that is better. The only people who will be able to do this are the people of patience. And the one that has a big, giant portion of good from Allah. That's the one who will be able to do it. It's not easy for you. And it's not easy for people for to be able to respond to the one that is harsh and hard towards you with kindness, to be able to respond to the one that cuts you off by keeping ties with them, to be able to make ease for the one who made difficulty for you. That's not everyone has the ability to. And that is Sunnah to Nabawiya. It's a prophetic methodology. It's how the Prophet ﷺ behaved. Salawatullahi wasallamu alayhi. And not everybody will be able to do that. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ And when you're trying to do this, if the shaitan causes you to slip up, the shaitan causes you to fall below your standards you had set for yourself. إِدَفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ That's what I'm going to do. They treat me badly, I'm going to treat them well. إِدَفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ I'm going to do that. But if you sometimes fall short, sometimes you slip up and you didn't do what you wanted, فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ Seek 
refuge with Allah from a shaitan al-rajim. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. A'udhu billahi sami al-alim min shaitan al-rajim. Seek refuge with Allah. Innahu huwa sami al-alim. Allah is the one who hears everything and Allah azza wa jal is the one who knows everything. So this should be the way that we should be the way that we deal with people. It should be the way that we set ourselves out to respond in the way that is better and to be the ones with the moral high ground and to realize that not every time are you able to do this. Not every time are you given the success to be able to do this. Sometimes you slip up. And when you do realize that this is from the shaitan, that it is something from the shaitan that he put between you that you slipped up and you weren't able to respond in the way that was better and the way that was uh, the moral high ground in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no doubt that this has some fiqh to it. There are some areas where you have to apply various understand certain understanding and uh, you have to apply your Islamic knowledge, particularly when you overlooking and forgiving causes the person to increase in their dhulm. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Unsur akhaka ظَالِمًا أَوْ مَظْلُومًا Help your brother whether he's an oppressor or an oppressed. And the Sahaba said, we know, Messenger of Allah, if he's oppressed, we should help him. But what about if he's a dhalim? And the Prophet ﷺ told them to stop that person from their dhulm, stop them from making dhulm. So there are uh, istithna'at, exceptions and situations where you might have to take a slightly different approach if you see that your approach isn't helping that other person. But still, that approach will not go outside of respond in the way that is better. Because even by sometimes when you have to take a different approach or you have to remind a person or you have to give them advice, you're still responding in the way that is better. The way they're responding to you in terms of being ignorant and behaving in an ignorant way. And you're responding to them by looking out for their interests, trying to stop them from their dhulm and trying to help them to move away from the oppression that they are doing. And you have an excellent example in Yusuf alayhi salam. Remember when his brothers were jealous of him and they saw that their father Yaqub alayhi salam preferred Yusuf over them and they plotted and they kidnapped him, they threw him into the well and they told his father that he had been eaten by a wolf and then Yusuf was taken into slavery and into Egypt and then into prison. And then he came to be in a position of authority in Egypt. And he saw his brothers. And then even after that, when his brothers said about him that he فَقَدْ سَرَقَ أَخٌ لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ That Yusuf, they said that he, he, he had stolen before. That they said about his younger brother that if he stole, then Yusuf, his other brother, used to steal before. فَأَسَرَّهَا يُوسُفَ فِي نَفْسِهِ And Yusuf, he kept it in himself and he didn't say anything. وَلَمْ يُبْدِهَا لَهُمْ And he didn't expose it to them. And then what did he say when he gathered his brothers together? When they said to him, أَإِنَّكَ لَأَنْتَ يُوسُفُ Are you Yusuf? قَالَ أَنَا يُوسُفُ وَهَذَا أَخِي I am Yusuf and this is my brother. What did he say? قَالَ لَا تَثْرِيبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْيَوْمِ There is no blame on you today. يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ May Allah forgive you. وَهُوَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ And he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. SubhanAllah, look at the sabr. It said 40 years passed between Yusuf having the dream that he told to his father and between the dream coming true of his father and his mother entering Egypt and they bowed to him and he said, Ya abati hadha ta'wiru ya. This is the explanation of my dream that came before. They said 40 years passed, 40 years of sabr, 40 years of what happened to Yusuf in that time. And he said to his brothers, La tathriba alaykum al yawm, yaghfir Allahu lakum wa huwa arham al rahimin. Don't take, there's no blame upon you today. I'm not going to hold it against you today. May Allah forgive you. And he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. And wallah, anyone who can implement that with their relatives and their family and can take that as their methodology. As the Prophet wasallam did with his enemies, then this person will be truly, truly successful. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will correct all of the problems that are between them. And ultimately, when you correct what is between you and Allah, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will correct what's between you and the people. If your heart is sincere towards Allah, Allah Azawajal will bring about reconciliation. And Imam Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, كَانَ الْعُلَمَاءُ فِيمَا مَضَى يَكْتُبُونَ بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ هَؤُلَاءِ الْكَلِمَاتِ the scholars of the past, they used to write to one another with these words. Man aslaha sariratahu, aslaha Allahu ala Whoever corrects their inner self and their private self, Allah will correct their public self and what is from the open, what's seen from them in the open. Waman aslaha ma baynahu wa bayna Allah, aslaha Allahu ma baynahu wa bayna nas And whoever corrects what is between them and Allah, Allah will correct what is between them and between all of the people. وَمَنْ عَمِلَ لِآخِرَتِهِ كَفَاهُ اللَّهُ أَمْرَ دُنْيَا And whoever acts for their akhirah, Allah will take care of their dunya. And I think that's a beautiful quote to end with and an inspiration to leave you all with. And that brings us to the end of the course on the Muslim family. SubhanAllah, we started off with this course intending to be fairly short. And I remember we discussed it being only a few lessons, a couple of weeks worth of lessons. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for us to cover the content that we covered. And actually, in reality, there, was, there are many, many more things that we could have covered, many more things that could have been said. And we have, by no means is it comprehensive. And by no means should it be seen as comprehensive. Actually, there are many ahadith that we didn't cover, many statements of the Salaf al-Salih ta'ala we didn't cover, many ayat of the Qur'an that we didn't talk about, the tafsir of them on, on these different topics. But this is what Allah made easy for us to mention. Whatever I said in this course that was correct, that is a grace and a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever I said that was wrong and that was a mistake, then Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they don't have anything to do with that. That, doesn't, that shouldn't reflect upon Islam in any way. There remains one segment of the course, inshaAllah Ta'ala, and that is a short Q&A, bi-idhnillahi Ta'ala. So we've asked the students to submit their questions to questions at amu.org and to put in the subject, the Muslim family. Uh, no doubt uh, that the uh, there'll be a cutoff point because we... There'll be people who will see this message late and they, they might send an email after it's already been done. But there'll come a particular time, a particular date, probably we'll leave a few days uh, for people to send their questions about the course, on the topic of the course, things they might not have understood, comments, even areas where I might have made a mistake and they want to highlight that. You're more than welcome. Send an email, inshallah, and we will try to deal with all of that in a Q&A episode or episodes, depending on how long it takes, inshallah ta'ala. And that will be released some days after the final episode uh, in the course is released, which is this one that we're doing right now. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bless us all in our families, to correct for us our family ties, to correct for us our spouses and our children, to make us obedient to our parents and to make us from those who keep ties with their relatives. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive us our mistakes. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention and Allah knows best. Wassalatu wassalam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.